Yay. Okay. Okay, today we're going to talk about jumping spiders. Uh, but as always, we want to say thank you to viewers like you make this program possible. And if you're not already a Backyard Natural subscriber, you too can become one. Your subscription includes weekly lectures, a monthly field trip, and a subscriber appreciation party. Um, and we have seasonal and annual subscriptions available, and our annual subscriptions are prorated throughout the year. Um, <clears throat> so our field trips, tomorrow, there will be a field trip up to the Blue Lotus Center um, with former Backyard Naturalist speaker, Mike Larson, who is our the executive director up there. Um, Tim, I just texted Tim, he'll be sending out information about the field trip, um, but I believe you're meeting at Riverside Park at one um, if you're riding up in the van. Um, and you'll go and explore until an undetermined time. But if you aren't able to make the trip tomorrow, um, our next field trip is going to be April 27th at 1 p.m. Again, with another former backyard naturalist lecturer, um, Allison Donnelly. She's going to uh, give you a little tour of Downer Woods um, right by the UWM property and a place where she does a lot of her research. Uh, according to the email I got from Tim about the trip tomorrow, we're meeting at Riverside at noon. Okay. At Blue Lotus. You're meeting at Blue Lotus at one. Yes. So if you're riding in the van, meet at Riverside at noon. Thank you, Marilyn. All right. Um, but getting into jumping spiders, spiders as, as a group are air breathing arthropods. Uh, they belong to the class uh, Arachnidia, um, which includes spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. Um, and But spiders themselves are the largest order within this class, and they rank seventh in their total species diversity among all animal orders. So as you probably know, there are a lot of spiders out there. Um, but jumping spiders belong to a different, unique family, um, Celticidae, uh, which include over 600 described genera and over 6,000 described species. Um, so they are the largest family of spiders, making up 13 percent um, of all spider species that have been described. We've talked about spiders once before um, here, but as a little refresher, um, like I mentioned, they are arthropods, meaning that they have segmented bodies with jointed limbs, um, and their bodies consist just of just two segments. So they have a cephalothorax, um, which is also their their head basically, and they have uh, their abdomen. Um, they have eight limbs, um, chelicerae, which are essentially their jaws. Um, usually they have fangs. And pedipalps, uh, which are a secondary pair of forward appendages. Um, these are not one of their eight limbs, um, but instead um, different appendages that contain sensitive chemical <clears throat> detectors um, and function as their, their taste and smell organs. Jumping spiders can be distinguished uh, by the shape of their, their cephalothorax, so their head, um, as well as their eye pattern. So like many other spiders, um, jumping spiders have eight eyes, uh, but unlike other families, their faces are roughly rectangular um, shaped surface, um, which gives them a very flat-faced appearance. Um, and so their front four eyes are most prominent while their other four eyes are less obvious. So I personally feel this, this eye arrangement makes them the cutest compared to, to other spider groups. Um, and so these forward facing anterior eyes are more prominent than any other family, except maybe um, our, our net casting spiders, um, but their large anterior eyes are adapted jumping spiders. 
uh, eyes are adapted to provide them detailed three-dimensional vision um, that assists them in estimating range, direction, and the nature of their potential prey. So their other four eyes sit on the sides of their head. Um, these more serve as their lateral vision, um, not so much of that, that three-dimensional, um, but their posterior median eyes, um, which is referred to as PME on this diagram. Um, in most spiders, including jumping spiders, these are largely vestigial, um, but they are thought to receive light from the sky and um, be sensitive to, to blue and UV light, um, which some of their other eyes are not. Um, their posterior lateral eyes, which sit farthest back on their head, um, are wide angle motion detectors. Um, so they sense motion from the spider's sides and from behind. And so in combination with their other eyes, um, these lateral eyes give them, the posterior lateral eyes give them nearly a 360 degree view around them. They just have a couple of, of blind spots um, on the sides as well as right in front of them. Um, but because of this, they have really good vision um, and their visual system aids them in what they do best, which is jumping. So this is Kim. Um, she is a regal jumping spider and a group of scientists trained her to jump on command so that they could study spider locomotion. And so they took imaging of her and they filmed her from multiple angles in using slow motion cameras um, and what they learned is that Kim was able to jump as far as six body lengths away and so that is <clears throat> quite significant um, without a running start humans can only jump about one and a half times their height um, so obviously much much farther uh, and this is because of a well-developed internal hydraulic system. So jumping spiders are different from other jumping insects because they're able to make very accurate and targeted jumps. Um, this internal hydraulic system allows them to extend their limbs by altering the pressure of the body fluid um, within them. Um, and this enables them to jump without having large muscular legs like um, some other jumping insects like grasshoppers, for example. Uh, <clears throat> so when jumping, they use a filament of silk um, tethered to whatever they're standing on. So you can kind of faintly see it in this image. This diagram shows it a bit better, but this silk line acts as a safety anchor um, and may also act as a mechanism for in-air stability. And so while they jump to get around and escape danger, the primary reason that they jump is to hunt. And so unlike other spiders, um, jumping spiders don't spin webs to catch prey, but rather are active hunters and ambush predators, um, capturing prey typically that are, are small invertebrates. Though that's not always true, um, they're very, skilled hunters and are capable of um, capturing prey that is, is much larger than their body size. Some species of jumping spiders will even prey on other spiders um, and they display really interesting web invasion behaviors. Uh, I have a video that I'll show um, once we, we are done with this, but um, some simply just attack prey that are entangled in the webs of other spiders, um, but others like this Portia spider um, will advance onto the web and use their legs to vibrate the silk, which lures the other spider in um, so they can essentially pounce on it and uh, kill it. Uh, in general, for jumping spiders, their, their hunting behavior is very greatly um, and are a really true testament to, to their intelligence. 
um, some species, including Portia jumping spiders, don't necessarily take um, the most direct path to their prey. Um, they navigate long detours to position them perfectly uh, to surprise their prey. They also display complex visual courtship behaviors. Um, so jumping spiders as a group exhibit sexual dimorphism. So the males um, look different from the females. Males um, are generally more colorful, um, have some body modifications, and they will um, dance to win over their mates. Uh, males possess colored or iridescent hairs, front leg fringes, and other modifications. Um, and then they perform this complex sliding, vibrational, and zigzag movements, um, as well as producing auditory signals, um, trying to impress a female. And to me, uh, these displays are, are very reminiscent of courtship displays put on by, by Birds of Paradise. Um, and just like Birds of Paradise, uh, male jumping spider modifications and displays vary widely between species and can range from very simple, like the iridescent colored fangs, or our trilocerae we see here, um, to more extreme. <clears throat> and perhaps the most extreme examples come from peacock spiders. Uh, they have colorful and usually iridescent patterns on the upper surface of their abdomen, as well as enhanced, that are enhanced with um, lateral flaps or bristles, which they display during courtship. So they can raise up their abdomen above them, kind of like a peacock raises its tail feathers. Females, on the other hand, are cryptically colored. So this allows them to blend in seamlessly with their surroundings. Uh, males are much more more vulnerable to um, predation because of the way they're colored. And as we learned earlier, uh, jumping spiders don't build webs when they hunt, um, but they still produce silk. And as I also mentioned earlier, um, they use that silk to anchor themselves before jumping, but they also use it to make what are called up tents or hammocks. Um, and these are typically little shelters uh, where they will sleep at night since they are um, diurnal hunters. Um, so they'll go to their pump tents to sleep, to molt, um, and to build and store their egg cases as well as to overwinter. And so here's a little guy in his, his pup tent. <clears throat> Female jumping spiders, um, like I said, use their, their pup tents to um, store their egg cases and they will lay um, typically 50 to 200 eggs and they'll stay with their pump tent. Um, usually they'll encase themselves in it with the eggs um, and hang out there until they hatch. And even beyond, um, they will stay and guard their little spiderlings until they're old enough to leave the nest. In Wisconsin, um, we have about 10 species of jumping spider. Um, I'll go through the most common ones, um, starting with our, our zebra jumping spider, um, distinguished by its, its black and white patterning. We also have a tan jumping spider, which is uh, self-described. <clears throat> the grayish jumping spider, uh, which is distinguished by this, this red abdomen. The dimorphic jumping spider, which is, is so named because uh, males come in two different morphs. Um, <clears throat> this tufted morph, <clears throat> and then I forget the name of the other morph, um, but essentially it comes in with pre pedipalps that are either like a tannish orangish color or are, are all black. And probably the most common um, and recognizable, uh, the bold jumping spider. The bold jumping spider has iridescent green 
to blue fangs, um, as well as a white or orange spot on their abdomen. And they're also very common in the pet trade. And they make really great pets, really easy pets. Um, they're very curious and friendly. They don't require a lot of space. Um, they don't eat super frequently, every, usually every four to five days, um, and are just extremely cute. <clears throat> Being so tiny, all they really need is a small terrarium. Um, if you're keeping one as a pet, most importantly, um, they need some height to their to their terrarium so that they can still stretch their legs and, and really practice their jumping. Um, and since they like to build their little pup tents up high, it's best to also have an enclosure that you can open without interfering with their pup tent. So ones that open from the bottom or the middle or have like a little door are usually best. And they'll eat most any insects, so they're, they're fairly easy to feed. Like I said, they only eat um, every few days. Um, their prey just needs to be sized appropriately um, for their body size. And so for most jumping spiders, fruit flies are usually excellent meals. To go about acquiring a pet jumping spider, you can, you can certainly catch one in the wild um, and make it your pet, but it's usually best to purchase from a breeder and there are a lot of them out there. Um, jumping spiders have increased in popularity as pets over the last several years. Um, so there are lots of breeders out there of different species of jumping spider, including bold, um, but also legal jumping spiders and some more some rarer um, more elaborately colored jumping spiders. Um, and buying from a breeder really just guarantees that you know what species you're getting, um, the age that you're getting, as well as what sex spider you're getting. Um, <clears throat> they're really fun to watch because um, each has their own little quirky personality, just like your cat or your dog. Um, and they're generally pretty interactive, um, but are difficult to handle. Since they're so small, they're very easy to lose or, or to hurt um, when doing so. And most only live for a few years. Um, so again, nice to get from a breeder so you know what you're getting. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. All in all, um, these intelligent little creatures are, are very fascinating to watch, both in the wild or in captivity. Um, I've seen several in in my house. Uh, I usually go and put them in my house plants, um, so they'll eat the little fruit flies that like to, to swarm my plants in the summertime. Um, but next time you're out in your garden, take a closer look and maybe you'll make a little friend. Um, and who knows, maybe you'll see some jumping spiders in our animal rooms in the near future. So that's all. I'll stop sharing my screen and we can watch a little video I have.